Hey guys, welcome back. This is History of Digimon, Digital Monsters, Season 1, Episode 29. This is about Episode 28 of Season 1. Now, before I actually start talking about it, I just want to mention to you guys, I want to thank you for your support with the channel and stuff like that. I got 44 subscribers right now and stuff. That's I just wanted to get that out of the way. And um, also, uh, like I mentioned before when I did, started this arc, I... I I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a warning. Um, the next video on my show, I'm gonna start laughing at the beginning of this, uh, at the beginning of my video. I, I just thought I'd get get that out of the way for you guys. I wanted to give you a, a bit of a warning. This is history of Digimon. So this is history of Digimon Digital Monsters season one episode 29 of my show, but it's about episode 28. Now, this episode is uh, kind of uh, it's. It kind of got an ironic title, really. It's called, uh, episode 28 in the English dub is called, uh, in the first season, um, it's all in the cards, which is kind of a weirdly sarcastic kind of title. What I mean by weirdly sarcastic is that the main characters use these Digimon-based key cards to open the gate and stuff. Now, I'll just continue on with it. Basically, what happens is after, at the beginning of the episode, um, Jedi is telling them that my Otis bond has closed the gate and they can't follow him. And then Matt's telling Jedi that um, you've got to let them go back in there to open the gate because uh, the eighth Digi Digidestined child is doomed if they don't and stuff like that. And, um, and then Zora's also saying, she's saying that it, that's not all because if... Uh, because if Myotis Mon and his army goes on a rampage in the digital world, um, a, a lot of innocent people in the human world will get hurt in the process. That's basically what she's saying. And then Ty is saying that there's just got to be some way for them to open that gate back up again. And Myotis, uh, uh, Jedi is saying that uh, he says that there is a way. And then, and then. She, and then Izzy's like wondering how and stuff. He says that, and then uh, uh, Jedi says that any door can be uh, opened with right, like the right key and stuff like that, which is kind of a funny little joke if you if you, if you ask my opinion, guys. I don't, I wanted to get that out of the way. Also, um, what happens is after that, um. They're wondering how they can open it without the cards and stuff like that. And then Jedi wants them to follow them to his house. And they're wondering how to get there. And then he tells them to look above them. And then Mimi's wondering what kind of direction those are. And then, uh, and then, uh, and then Jedi says that they're very good directions if you just listen. And they were looking up in the sky, and they see this like little searchlight thing of a jiggy. And um, what happens is after that, uh, what happens after that is basically, uh, Jedi tells them that um, he ran out of maps, and then he, they, he wants them to follow the light, and that's where his house is, and they walk toward where it is and stuff, and this is going to sound kind of weird, but when when they get to where the light is, it actually is coming out of a lake, and then Joe's, like, he's not complaining, basically, but he's just, um, he's just a little worried and stuff like that, and then what happens is, after that, he's saying that either they come to directions really wrong, or Jenna's house is, like, it's Matt that's saying that, either they got the directions really wrong, or Jedi's house is like in the middle of a lake and stuff like that. And then what happens is when Gohan's in the water, he's telling them to come in, and then the, the water's fine and stuff. And then what happens is after that, um, what happens after that is basically uh, the water where Gohan's in starts glowing a bit. And then what happens after that is um, it the water kind of rescinds, like the real stairs going into the ocean, and, and they're walking in it, and then they come upon this, like, house thing, and they're wondering if that's where Jedi is, and they, they're in the backyard of his house, and they keep telling him, and they say that, Ty said that, they, that he doesn't see a doorbell, 
and then they all keep yelling, and then Santa says, Who needs a doorbell with such noisy visitors? And then, and then after that, what happens is they all say that that's a real Jedi, and and he and he makes a bit of a joke about that. He says that um, he says, Who are we expecting, Santa Claus? And then what happens after that is they. Izzy is saying that they, they just haven't met the real him before, and then Mimi's, uh, and then Ty is saying that he could have always come in person, but he always uses, like, projections and stuff like that, and then basically what happens is he said that it's just a show to impress them and stuff like that, which is kind of really weird in my personal opinion, and then Mimi says, how come they call, um... How come he calls them the digestion and stuff? Now that actually will kind of, part of that will kind of actually get explained in the next episode. I'll, but I, I'll save that for the next part. I just thought I'd get that out of the way, guys. Um, he says that he's old, but he's not. And then after me, he's done screaming. He said that he takes it easy on him because he's, he's old, but he's not deaf and stuff. And he tells them that they were chosen to save both. Uh, this both the digital world and their own world, which kind of makes sense because uh, the digital world is kind of a world that is connected with the human world and stuff like that. If you guys remember uh, my video about episode 20, but about episode 19, I stated that. Just so I get that out of the way. And uh, and then uh, Matt is wondering how they how exactly they were chosen, and then Sora's wondering that as well because they just signed up for summer camp. And Jedi said that they'll have to find out those answers on their own. They actually will find out in the next episode also. I just thought I'd get that out of the way. Well, part of it anyway. I just thought I'd get that out of the way again. And then what happens is, uh, they go inside Jedi's house and, he sh and they see these fish. Well, they're actually halibuts. And then what happens is after that, um, what happens after that is, um, Joe said that those are halibuts. They're like saltwater fish and stuff. And then Jedi says that he's right, so he's got to feed them, feed them all kinds of salted food and stuff like that, like popcorn, stuff like that, and, and stuff. And the, the important thing is for them to be the digitist and, and stuff. And for now, they better get some sleep. And then during the night, um, uh, Izzy and Jedi are having a bit of a discussion where, um, he says that, um, actually, b before I continue, he actually gives them a couple of cards, and he says that tomorrow he'll teach them the proper use of the cards and stuff, and then what happens after that is he says that he wants them to get some sleep, and then, like I said, he, he then he's talking with Izzy where he says that, um, where he says that Izzy's telling him that the digital world is, uh, like their world, but different and stuff. Basically, what that means is every bit of data that is, that is in the digital world had originally come from the human world, basically. And and then um, what happens is after that, what happens after that is is he saying that if Jenna, if he's not actually human, then what is he? And how is he on like the Digimon and stuff? And he said that he has no attributes. And basically, and basically, what attributes are is there are kinds of attacks Digimon have. And I I should also quickly explain what the three classifications of Digimon are called. Really, now uh, the three classifications of them are called data, virus, and vaccine. Now, what happens is um they. He, then I also said that attributes also determine whether why some Digimon are good and some are evil and stuff and stuff like that. And then and then Jedi says that has Izzy been using that Digimon analyzer he gave him and stuff. And then he says yes, but he, he wanted to ask him something about it. And then what happens is after that, um, he, what the, what the question he's wanting to ask Jedi is is basically he wants He's telling him that he's only able to access information on digi only Digimon that he's seen, not any of the other ones, and not any of the other kids, any of the other ones have seen his stuff. And then what happens is he, Jedi says that it, that is a problem, and is he wondering if it's a problem he can fix? And then he tells them, tells them that um, 
you should just leave it to him and he'll have it all fixed by the morning and stuff like that. And then what happens after that is he just tells them to get some sleep and then and in the morning after he wake after Izzy and the others wake up, Jedi says that he, he may complete the modifications to the computer and stuff like that. And um what happens because basically what the modifications are is he put an adapter in Izzy's computer and basically whenever he places one of the DigiDeaths in one of his friends' digivices in the adapter, he'll give them information and on any of the Digimon he has seen, uh, any, him or any of the others have seen and stuff. And then what happens is after that, he's telling them to remember that they're the DigiDeaths and stuff. And then they go back to my old response castle and... Now, just to be quick, frank about the cards, he actually gives them the right amount, but he actually gives them one extra. I just said that one of them is the fake, basically. I just thought I'd get that out of the way. And then th they see some of the Devijamon, and then basically what happens is after that, um, what happens after that is Tentamon digivolves to his ultimate form to fight the Devijamon, and it causes the warp to go back to normal, and then they're in the castle. And then they're debating on what order to put the cards in. And what happens is after that, and then what happens after that is, um, what happens after that is they get to where the gate is. And then what happens is after that, they figuring out the order of the cards and then they're wondering how to do it. And then there's this little shaking with the ground and stuff. With, and the Patamon goes out to check where it is. And then he, when he comes back, he said that the walls and ceilings of the castle have caved in and the passages are like frocked and they can't get back and then one of them has to put, and then Izzy says that one of them has to put nine cards in the holes and um, then Joe is saying that Ty should be the one to do it and then Matt's kind of agreeing with Joe on that because in times like that the decisions have to be made by the leader and stuff, which is kind of right, in my opinion. And then Ty's wondering when he gets to be the leader, and, and then what happens is after that, um, uh, Matt's reminding Ty that, do, does he remember when he was gone? They, they like, fell apart with, without him there, so, and then he was the one who brought them all back together and stuff like that. And then after that, what happens is, Mimi's freaking out a little bit. She's saying that she just wants to get back home, that's all. And then she's saying that um, she's being selfish again, and, they have to, and she has to remember that they're a team and stuff. And then she says that, um, and then she says that she's telling Ty to save the day, and then Sora's saying that, um, and I told them to, like, believe in their friends and stuff like that. And then what happens is, they're all, they're having reminiscing moments about when they defeated some of the evil Digimon from the past, and, and then later on, Ty says that it's really up to him to make the decision, and then he actually chooses Izzy to make that decision, but now I should just quickly mention, um, when, uh, when the, the ground starts shaking and stuff, Patamon actually goes off and comes back to find out what it is, and then later on, this, uh, in, like I said, Patamon goes off and then comes back, and then this, later on, this uh, insect-like Digimon that looks like a spider shows up. Now, I'll just explain who he is very quickly. Um, he's called Dokugumon, and he's, uh, he's uh, classified as an uh, insect and a virus-type Digimon that has parasites growing all over his body. And his special attacks are known as Poison Thread and Poison Cobwebs. I just thought I'd get that out of the way. And then, um, after they, after he finds out this significance of the star pattern and stuff like that. They Ty puts all the cards in the holes and manages to get the door open and then what happens after that is um what happens after that is they manage to open the gate and they get back to their world and and then they it shows them back in the real world and then they're wondering what happens to their Digimon and stuff. And then what happens after that is um they're Maybe they won they're wondering if they got the cards wrong after all, and it, it turns out they didn't. The Digimon were actually just off looking for some food and stuff, and then they're all being happy about um, being home, and they don't have to eat leaves and stuff anymore. They can eat cheeseburgers, stuff like that. And, and Ty's saying that he's happy that they're all headed back to his hometown, 
and they all and they like already know that's where they're gonna find the eighth child, and then he tells them let's go and and that's basically where the episode stops. So if you guys like this video on YouTube, just please give it the very best you guys can, and I'll see you guys next time. Keep it digital, guys.